Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us for Bible studies tonight. Um, let me just go right into the announcements. Tomorrow, there's morning prayer at um, 8 o'clock, and that would be at our church, of course. And then, we'll, of course, we have our Sunday service, if you'd like to join. And then we have our midweek service on Wednesday. And this Friday, this is actually tonight, the last Bible studies of the year. So there will not be Bible studies um, next Friday, the following Friday. And there is men's discipleship on the 28th. But there's no women's discipleship this month, um, just so all you ladies know, whoever's watching. So that's all I have for the announcements. If I missed anything, um, watch Sunday service and pastor will give the announcements again. So praise the Lord. Let's um, pick up today's offering. And for today's offering, I chose the scripture of Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse, verse 38. And it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Now with all my heart, I believe in giving to the Lord, or investing our tithes and offerings to the kingdom of God. And every year, my wife and I always challenge ourselves to give a certain amount every year, no matter where our finances are. And by doing this, I find that every year we're able to give a little more, a little more every year. So there's power in giving to the Lord. I know He honors it with all my heart. And in the scripture it says, Give and it shall be given to you. Press down, shaken, and running over. So I challenge you. You know, this offering is the last offering of our Bible studies this year. Challenge yourself. Put in, let God put a certain number in your mind and in your heart. And give. Whether you start today or give next year in Bible studies, every Friday, whenever we have Bible studies, give that amount and you'll see the power of God move in your life. Amen. So let's pray for today's offering. Of course, we know the way to give is through Zao. Or if you like to give when you attend church, just ask the usher that scans your temperature for an offering envelope. Other than that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that we just give and trust you, Lord, that you we will receive from you, God, an abundant blessing, shaken, pressed down, and running over. And I pray for those who ain't able to give, God, bless them this year. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's all turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. As, hold on, my phone is very, very bright. Jeremiah chapter 29. And as I said a few moments ago, this is the last Bible studies of the year. So I started reflecting about this year. The good, the bad, and like the movie says, yes, some of the ugly. But through all the things that I started reflecting on this year. The one thing that kept myself and my family going and following God are the plans that God has for our life, believing in them, knowing them, and always pursuing them. And how we pursue the plans of God always starts with the thoughts in our mind. And I know that this is an area that Satan always attacks. That's why I entitled this message, Thoughts of Peace. And I'm going to read Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 14. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil 
to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. In other words, listen to you. And you shall seek me and find me. When you, when you shall seek me, I mean, when you shall search for me with all your heart. That's verse 13. Now verse 14. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations. And from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again unto the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just pray, God, that you bless us tonight. Bless us tonight with the power to overcome the thoughts, Lord, that imprison us. Bless us tonight, God, just to have the vision that you have given us to walk worthy of your calling, God, as we learn the power of having the thoughts of peace. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, that's a very familiar scripture that I just read. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know that it's my wife's favorite scripture. I know that many men and women of God used it. I started remembering when my niece, Grace, gave a speech in high school. She used that scripture. But I started reflecting on the thoughts of people. One thing I know for sure is that I cannot read your thoughts, nor can you read mine. But what I do know that what we all have in common is that many of our thoughts are random. Many of our thoughts don't make sense. Many of our thoughts are evil and destructive. Many of our thoughts are just, how can I say? They want to take us places that we want to go. And sometimes our thoughts take us places that get us in trouble. But in this particular story, I can only imagine how the men and women of God thought towards God. What happened was the King Nebuchadnezzar kept um, captured them, God's people, and imprisoned them into captivity in Babylon. So I can imagine being a man and woman of God, and I started reflecting how many people out there through this whole year, many people were in quarantine. Through this whole year, many people have thoughts of different things going in their mind because of what's going on. And sadly, like the people of God, in this particular illustration in Jeremiah 29, if you read the whole chapter, Many men and women of God outwardly are doing good, but inwardly they're imprisoned by their own thoughts. They have what's called a captivity of the inner man or woman. And the sad part is, is I've been there. I've been there before in 2010. I couldn't control my own thoughts. And it caused a lot of pain to my family. But then, because of the God, the grace of God, I was able to get through it. And just because of that one moment, that one touch of God in 2010 has helped me all the way to 2020. You see, many of us have gone through many things this year. Many things. And I don't want to give too much of my testimony, but I think it's important to let some people know what I've gone through. Just a little portion. Because through whatever I've gone through, 
me and my family because my wife goes through it with me and my son. The thoughts of peace are always there. Like right now, I keep looking down because I struggle to see in my life. In March, the doctors told me that I was going blind. And as a man of God, all kinds of crazy thoughts go into your head. I'm sure many of you out there got some news that wasn't pleasant this year. And all kinds of thoughts go through your head. Mind is how to deal with my physical blindness. And as my eyesight goes a little more and more, if I didn't allow Satan to captivate my mind, amen, I haven't allowed that. There's no fear in it. As a matter of fact, when I read Jeremiah 29, I realize whatever I'm going through, God still has a plan in my life, in our life, meaning mine, my wife's, and you, whoever's watching. Through whatever's going on in life, not only does God have a plan for us, but his thoughts towards us will bring us through any situation that life has to throw at us. Because sometimes when God wants to get our attention and strengthen us, our thoughts or what we reflect on in that moment of time when we should be seeking God with all of our hearts, it damages us if we're not careful. We start to think the worst. And then because of all the bad things that we think here, we say, man, I'm in sin, God. My thoughts are not holy unto you, but God knows more about us than we know of ourselves. He knows how weak we are. He knows how random and evil man is. But at the same time, if you and I keep our minds and our hearts towards God, even in captivity like these people were, we can still have victory. We can still have the thoughts of peace. And not only that, instead of allowing the enemy to reflect on all the bad things we've gone through this year, a man and woman of God who are strong will sit back and say, in my worst moments, I searched for God with all of my heart and I found him. That's the God we serve. Whenever we search for him with all of our hearts, no matter what's going on, we will find him. He will never leave us, nor forsake us. I don't have to mentally, how can I say mentally, prepare myself for God. What I do is something more. I expect it from God. An expectancy is more better than mentally preparing. An expectancy means that no matter what happens in life, God is going to see us through. Not only that, strengthen us for the plan that he has in our life. Sometimes I believe with all my heart that many of us are in captivity right now because God wants to get our attention. He wants to turn us back to him full hearted not worrying about how we're going to pay the bills though that's important not worrying about this and that person though they are very important god wants us to worry about our relationship with him he wants to be number one in our life that's why a captive man or woman of god who know god right now i'm in prison by something in my life when they turn to him, like in verse 12, Then shall ye call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. I will listen to you, God saying. And then when you and I pray and get to this place where the thoughts of peace are there, God says in verse 13, And you shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all 
your hearts. Searching for God with all of your heart. I'm not going to stand up here and say it's easy. Because the Holy Ghost, when you and I search for God with all of our heart, the Holy Ghost convicts us when you search for God with everything. It shows us why we're in captivity. It shows us why our thoughts are going in circles and circles. And not only that, it shows us how to be free. Being free, being not a captive to the world, to the world's standards, or to people that try to disciple you and they're going in the wrong direction. It's not easy. Why? Because to be free means to be completely holy and dedicated to God. It means to let go of some things or some people in our life. It means to dig deep in your word of God and give them time to fill you and I with the understanding of what we're reading. Because I believe many men and women of God, all of us, at one time or another, either have them or for a moment have lost them the vision that God has given us. God gives every single person a vision who, of who they can be in following Christ. And like the people back in these days in this story, the enemy wants to keep us captive, trapped, imprisoned on the inside so that we cannot go to the full potential that Jesus Christ has for us. And I know that it bothers a man and woman of God. When you know you have a calling. But your thoughts are keeping you from going fully. From reaching the full potential of Christ. I've been there. I've had many mind battles about that. Why? Because when I read the Word of God, when I pray, and God reveals to us His power, when God reveals to us His grace, and the best thing of all, when He reveals to us the vision, I realize how is there too to try to stop us. I realize all the evil and random thoughts are there too. The only difference is, which one are you and I going to manifest and show that we are following? You see, at one point in someone's life, if we're not careful, something will keep you captive. Something will be an invisible chain. And stop us from, pursu from pursuing all that we can be in Christ. Yes, you might be strong in other areas. Yes, it doesn't mean that you're not a prayer warrior. Or that you're in sin. All it means is that, you see, when we're in a captive bondage, it means that we only go as far as the chains allow us to go. In verse 14 it says, after it says, and search for me, it says, and I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whether I have driven you saith the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place where I caused you to be carried away captive. You see, in order to break these chains of being in spiritual captivity, you and I must allow the Holy Spirit to change our thinking 
You and I must allow the Holy Spirit, give them time to break these invisible chains because the, the weapons that you and I have are not carnal. They are powerful and mighty and breaking down the strongholds of everything. Amen. How do we get to this place? You see, what keeps us captive is our surroundings mostly. The more we surround ourselves with worldly things, the more the world will invade our thoughts. The more we surround ourselves again with worldly things, the more the world will invade our thoughts. What do I mean by that? Whoever you're surrounding yourself with, you're going to end up talking like them. You're going to end up being like them. That's why I stopped hanging out with people that, it's not that I don't love them. I can't hang around with people that are doing sin and they're supposed to be Christians. Why? Because that's just, that's just showing them that I'm okay with it and I'm not. I'm not okay with a man and woman claiming to follow God sinning in front of me. Many men and women of God say, oh, don't judge me. You don't understand. The world is watching you and me, how we represent Christ. And if I hang out with you, all it takes is one little thought because my thoughts are random like many people. And before you know it, I'm acting like the world instead of like Christ. And my thoughts of peace are no longer there. All it is is thoughts of war. Instead of letting the worldly thoughts invade, we should concentrate on, on honor, the truth, and the pure heart. That's what will help us have pure thoughts. When you and I concentrate on honoring God, Every day of our life. Yesterday I was reading a book. Tremendous book from this man from the 1800s. And he talked about how important it is to understand that you and I are a branch. And Jesus Christ is the vine. And that's found in John chapter 15. You see the vine and branch never detach from each other. All the branch has to do is rest in the vine. And purity comes out of it. Love comes out of it. Thoughts of peace come out of it. But it's the moment when you and I detach from the vine. Detach from the pureness. Is when the peace leaves us. You see, if... We fill ourselves with good. God will bless us. And this is found in the book of Psalms, verses 1 through 3. I mean, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, it says, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree, firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers. And whatever he does, he prospers. That's the God that we serve. You see, I know that in serving God for so many years, if we're not careful, we begin to turn religious. Religion is way different than relationship with God. Religion is a habit. 
I'm going to church out of habit. I'm going to church because it's a function that I just know how to do automatically. But that's not the relationship of Jesus. You see, a relationship means I want to be deeper in love with him. I want to know who he is more and more. It's like the relationship with my family, my wife, my son. Daily, even though it doesn't happen daily, I try. I want to go deeper in love with them. Is it possible? Of course. I want to know them more. I want to be around them more than anybody in my life. That's how the relationship of Christ should be. That's what it means. And when you and I get closer to God, the streams of water, living water, begin to flow inside of us. How do I get to this place? In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 7, before I read that, you and I have to realize that in order to get a clear peace of mind, we must first recognize and repent to God and ask Him to help us. In Isaiah 55, verse 7, it says, Let the wicked forsake his ways, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Again, the thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God is waiting for anybody who is watching, who is in right with God. He's waiting for you to forsake your wicked thoughts. He's waiting to pardon you in your walk with God. He's waiting with mercy, as it says, and the Lord will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. He's waiting for those that are playing Christian and they know it. And I'm not here to backlash anybody. Why? I'm so passionate about somebody fully going forward for God. It's because you and I will win souls when we're on fire for the Lord. It's because you and I will have the power to show that Christ is alive. Because he lives through us when we're living right for the Lord. It's because you and I will help those that are captive in their mind say, you know what? The Lord, the Prince of Peace, is in these hands. Let me pray for you. The Prince of Peace dwells inside of me. Let me help you so that you can have thoughts of peace. That's why it's so important. To return back to the Lord. Not only that. You will have peace. How do I get there? I'm too weak. Some will say. Or I'm already too far gone. Understand who God is. Whatever you're thinking. Always remember this. In Isaiah the same. Chapter, verse 50, chapter 55 verse 9. It says. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are the ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's why it's so important to have confidence in God. No matter who you are, know that the Lord, this is for everybody who trusts in Him. For I know the thoughts that I have, that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. As long as you and I hold on to that scripture and many others, nothing will stop us from fully walking in the ways of God. Jesus said that I am the truth and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through Him. 
keep following Jesus with all of your heart. I am so sorry for anybody who has had a rough year this year. Messenger us and we will pray for you. But know that no matter what you and I are going through, God has a divine plan for us. All we have to do is search for him with all of our hearts. Repent and say, God, there's a captivity stronghold that I cannot let go of without your strength. He is merciful if you give it to him. That's why, amen, I keep following the Lord with all of my heart. Because I can always remember what he brought me out of the captivity. And I always believe with all my heart that I walk by faith and not by sight. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you set any captives free, God. And I pray whoever is watching this, Lord, that they feel your peace. Fill their thoughts with peace, Lord. And give them strength, God, to go for the plans that you have for us in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I'd just like to give an invitation for anybody who has walked away from God, or you know you're no longer serving God with all of your heart. Simply say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. I come to you as a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose on the third day. And this evening, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody have a Merry Christmas. And always remember, Jesus is the reason for the season. We love you guys. God bless.